At this juncture, King Kamsa is apparently acting like a good gentleman. He's very courteously behaving with Vasudev and Devaki. He even, Anugata Bhushakri, even takes permission before returning to his own home or palace. That is a fine point of Vedic culture, that before leaving a person's company, before leaving going away somewhere else, especially if that person is respected by you, to take their permission. It may be a formality, but the idea is there, that uh, giving respect to those who are senior and more respectful to take their permission before leaving and going away. So Kamsa is behaving in a very decent, civilized, moral, nice way with Vasudev and David. And unlike his previous behavior, which was wanted to kill David Key, and then not killing David Key, he killed her sons, one after the other. But now he's very satisfied with the behavior of Vasudev and David Key is acting in a very polite, civilized, and respectful manner. Now he's going to go and meet his ministers and take the advice from them. He's going to expand his infanticide to... Infanticide means killing of children. He's going to expand his infanticide to not only the children of David, it's pretty bad killing your children and nephews, uh, but now he's going to extend it to all the only children who have been born recently within the whole area because of the oracle that he heard that the child who is to kill you has been born somewhere else. So he said, well, the child to be born is the child who is to kill him has been born somewhere else. His ministers are advised him. That you'll see in the next few verses. That better kill all the children. Then he'll be free. Of course, it's so foolish they don't think that. Well, if the voice, the oracle, is true, and no, not this time oracle, this time the David. First it was the oracle that said the eighth child of David will kill you. Now this time it's Devi, Durga herself, who is saying the child who is to kill you is born elsewhere. Now if they if they accept that what she says is true, 
that the child can be born elsewhere. If they accept that he's born elsewhere, then he should also accept that it's true that he'll kill you. So it's not possible to to upset the, the condition. If one thing is true, the child is born, and it's also true, he's going to kill you. So kill the children. You can't get away from this divine instruction. There are many instances of this uh, trying to, or when some prophecy is given or curse is given, to try to overcome that. There are many instances of this. The sages cursed some of this. This child you have in your womb, you're pretending is a child in your womb. You know the story how he wanted to fool around with the sadhu. He wanted to make some jokes with the rishis. So he dressed, he dressed as a young woman, pregnant, and actually had some steel in the form of this holy. He said, well, will, will this be a male or a female? As if to, as if to show that well, the sages are all fools. And so if they, if they say either male or female, then the, the young men of the Nadi dynasty will just, whatever they say, they'll just fall around laughing because it's just a, a lump of iron. But they weren't such fools as they thought. And they said, You fool! If you want to make us a difference? You are a fool! This which is your holding in your stomach, that will be the cause of destruction of the whole body of bodies. So then they went to Uber saying, oh, yes, they were not the rich field for us. We can understand that they were trying to fool them. So now what we should do? So we were saying, oh, they're not there. You file this steel lump into tiny pieces. So, so tiny pieces of iron. It's not like to kill a man, but it's so happy that the iron pieces, the tiny steel pieces, they crushed it into the shore. Just so you'll see where there's where there's just a low sea at the, toward, near, near the beach. If if there's not much current there. Then sometimes weeds grow, just as in fresh water. So the, the steel, the iron mixed with the, the those weeds that were growing, they became heavy iron, just like steel was. So that became the cause of the destruction of the other guys. One of the causes, the instrumental cause. The ultimate cause was Krishna's desire. Another cause was the anger of the others. There's only, there were many causes. For any effect, there was many causes. The instrumental cause was the steel rods, or weeds, that were used by the members of the Yadu dynasty to smash each other's brains and pieces. So, like this, there are many, many instances. We also know the birth of Virginia, there is one demon, Shandara, who was told that. This child will kill you. So immediately after the birth of the child, to live in the world, he took the child through in the sea. What hope is there of a little child surviving in the great sea? For example, the little baby was eaten by a fish. The fish was caught. And when you have to, it's called in English, to dress a fish, I don't know what it's called, that it means to, to cut it up and cut out the intestines where the stool is and all this kind of thing before you cook it. So when they were dressing this fish, they, they cut open the stomach and so it's a big fish, a little baby is. Oh, what a nice baby. So the baby grew up very quickly and then they killed that baby. He couldn't escape his fate. So you can't escape. He comes in and he's to escape. He thinks he's very intelligent. But here, the verse is given present this. Huh? Durga Devi Sarva Bhuta Ishu Nidra Rupen Samastika That Devi or Maya is the very powerful personality who keeps everyone as if sleeping. 
And so it's very intelligent. If you don't, be, you don't become a big, powerful king unless you're intelligent. Because you're strong, you just have to be intelligent. But uh, sometimes people underestimate the intellectuals they have this tendency to underestimate the intelligence of powerful politicians and powerful leaders because it's a different kind of intelligence. Intellectual intelligence is one kind of intelligence, but the intelligence required to dominate a country or take over a country, it's a different kind of intelligence. Just like Stalin, the, all the intellectuals in the Communist Party at that time, they thought he's just a buffoon. He's not, he wasn't at all an intellectual person. They thought this person is just a buffoon. But actually he was very intelligent. Not intellectually, but he was very intelligent how to manipulate, how to set one person against him. He was an expert politician. So he very intelligently took over, killed all the intellectuals, and uh, took power. So it comes to have that kind of intelligence that is required to dominate others. Demoniac intelligence. It's not even that intelligence is not necessarily demoniac. It can be king's power that can be used in a very good way also. We don't see that in the world at the present time. But kings are Yudhish and also very intelligent in managing the state, dominating others. In the modern age, people don't like to be dominated by others because domination means exploitation in the modern age. But in a state where the king actually acts as a king should for the benefit of others, then people are very happy to be dominated by such a king. They like it. They feel protected. That is normal situation in the state. Not in the present age, completely chaotic. You know, who's in charge? Who's in charge today? Who's not in charge tomorrow? Whoever's in charge, it's who to vote for? Who's going to who's going to uh, be the, the the least of all evils? Who's going to be the the least bad of all of them? We can't expect any leader is going to do any good things. But who's going to, who's going to cause us the least harm? Well, Kamsa, he didn't have any such scruples of doing good to the people. He thought, we should do good to myself, the money, I should be the king. I will kick out all the demigods and support the demigods. I will be in charge. So he's very intelligent. In, in, in politics, there are very, very different activity who's very intelligent in politics, they know when to make alliances with others, when to smash others. That's why you'll find sometimes that even people who are completely opposed to each other in politics, sometimes they come together and make alliances because they have a common enemy. There's very strange things going on in the Indian political situation. It's yet again time for the Indian general election. And we find groups that, that ideologically they're absolutely opposed to each other, but they come together because they don't want another party in power. So they say, they make some excuse that, well, actually they're not so bad. And, but the main thing is it's all shuffling how to, how to, but at the present time we'll make this compromise with the aim of eventually when we get stronger, these enemies who we made an alliance with, eventually we want to smash, they're both thinking like this. Eventually we'll smash them and we'll take power. Everyone's thinking, this is politics. So Kams was very expert in this. He made alliances with kings like Jirasandha, Shishupal, and other people of the same mentality. And especially he was interested to crush and destroy all the members of the Yadu dynasty, Thangara, Vishnu, Bhuja, all these related dynasties who were godly by nature. So he was very intelligent, but uh, his intelligence was limited. He was under the influence of Durga or Maya, by which 
uh, even very intelligent people make very silly mistakes. They make miscalculations. So here, that he made the miscalculation of thinking that I will kill all the children and this will be free. But he can't be free from, from the teaching of what, from what has been said by Durga. Another thing he might have considered is that previously there was an article which said that the eighth child of David he will kill you. And now apparently that article was wrong. So he didn't consider that, well, maybe Durga, who spoke to him, that the child born to kill you, the chi child who will kill you is born somewhere else. He didn't consider, well, maybe that's wrong also. He didn't consider that. So he's very intelligent, but the nature of Maya is to cover the intelligence. That's called, this kind of demon is called Maya Aparita Jnana. And even though they're knowledgeable and intelligent, some crucial points of their intelligence are covered over. As Prabhupada often noticed with astonishment, Prabhupada never ceased to be amazed that even though people are so, you see there's so much education in the modern age and very highly intelligent people, but they make silly mistakes in their, un in, in their understanding. The, the example Prabhupada gave of Professor Kotovsky, a highly intelligent person, no doubt. But in the matter of spiritual knowledge, he made the basic mistake of thinking that when the body is finished, everything is finished. So that his, spiritually, he had absolutely zero knowledge. It wasn't possible to have him get spiritual knowledge because he denied the very existence of spirit by making a very basic miscalculation that when the body is finished, everything is finished. Yeah, so, is the whole field of spiritual knowledge is completely closed to him. Even though on the material plane he's very really intelligent. Spiritually, fool number one. And we see that in South India, there are many people who are highly intelligent scientists, government research scientists, physicists. But there are many of them who believe that Sai Baba, so-called Sakya Sai Baba, is God. Now on one side they're very intelligent, but on the other side they're ridiculously foolish. If you at all investigate into what is the meaning of God, then immediately you have to conclude that whoever God may or may not be, Sakya Sai Baba is definitely not God. But due to their spiritual intelligence being covered by illusion, spiritually they are asleep. They don't know what is the truth. So Kamsa was in that category. He was a demon. Therefore he was inclined to demoniac and atheistic views. Therefore he couldn't understand that. Anyway, why am I going to be killed? Because I'm a demon. If I stop being a demon, then maybe I won't be killed. Instead of thinking to kill all the children, then I'll be safe. He thought, he could have thought, well, I'll stop being a demon. I can also rule the country in a non-demoniac manner. You can still enjoy it. If you want to be a big king with honor and respect and wealth and sense of enjoyment, you can do it. You don't have to crush the people to do so. If you maintain the people very nicely, you can still live very happily, much more securely. Because if you rule in a demoniac manner, there's more likelihood that they'll want to overthrow you. And if you keep alliances with other demons, then being demons like you, they may be very friendly with you, but they're always thinking how to shoot you in the back or stab you in the back and take your position. So it's a very dangerous position. To be a demon is very dangerous, either materially or spiritually. Because materially, you're always in competition with others. You're always trying to exploit them and you're always trying to crush them. So you can expect that when you're living in association with demonic people, 
then you can expect that because they're demoniac, that they'll always try to overthrow you. They may kowtow to you out of fear only. But the other side of fear is anger to overcome you. So even material it's going to lose and spiritually it's a disaster because you you lose the idea of what the purpose of human life is and you have to suffer. Horrendous karmic reactions. So in all ways, to be a demon it's not a very good proposition. Even if you want to enjoy this world materially, you can do so. You'll do so in a much better way by being pious. If you live a pious life, then you will you can have nice good karma. Whereas if you live an impious life, you may by force take some position of authority, or you may by force take the opulence of others. But you won't be able to enjoy it. As a demon by your by your nature, chintana premayamcha. The demons they are always full of anxiety. That is the constitution of the demon. He's always full of anxiety. Because he is, uh, in Gita Krishna says, na shochati, na kamchati. One should not hanker or lament. But the demon is always hankering and lament. He's always in anxiety. Someone will take away from me what I have. So a demon cannot be happy. Constitution. Even if he has so many things to enjoy that he can't enjoy. And as a result of his simple activities, all those things will be taken away from him. He will suffer simple reactions. But if you live a pious life, then if, you, if, you, if your aim is to enjoy this material world, you can do so by living a pious life, and nature will reciprocate. So many nice things will be produced. You can live very peacefully and happily without anxiety. At least relatively without anxiety. This material world is always full of anxiety. And you can go on enjoy because by living a pious life, you can go to the heaven with them. So of course, this material world is such that there's all <laughs> and however pious you are, there's always some inbuilt defect. Just like Riddha Maharaj was so pious, but by some bad luck, that means bad karma, he ended up getting a hellish bomb. So even pious life is not recommended. Because any kind of existence in this material world means there must be suffering. It is the very nature of this world. The suffering, the nature of this world is bukhara and shashri. Full of suffering. And even if you think you're happy, you'll be wrenched out of that situation. You'll be thrown out. You can't. I'm, I'm very happy. My home, my wife, my children, everything. Kicked out. Get out. Now you become a dog or a dog. You can't stay in that situation. So the material world is by nature miserable. But even if you have a desire to enjoy it, then better do so in a pious way. You'll enjoy more. But the demons, they can't see them. Because they're very much covered by ignorance. And by keeps them asleep. They can't see what is for their benefit. That's also true of the pious people. You can't see that what is for their ultimate benefit. Unless you come to Krishna consciousness, that is the only real benefit. But those who are pious, at least they're somewhat in a better position than the demons. The demons are very deeply covered by illusion. Therefore, whatever they do always acts against their self interest. What they think is in their self interest is not in their self interest because they, they do not understand. The subtle laws of nature by which for every action there is a reaction. Without understanding this, you can't actually act in your own self interest. You're always acting against your own self interest. What the demons think is in their own self interest inevitably comes to be against their own self interest. Either on the karmic platform immediately, uh, either on the karmic platform. You have to suffer simple reactions. Or even in a more gross way, you can see that the scientists, they produce many things to exploit nature, but it always acts in such a way that it causes more problem than the problem that you have to solve. 
It's always that we make some drug which is supposed to cure some disease, but the drug itself makes a worse disease than the drug than the than the condition it was supposed to cure. What did the pharmacist say about that? You think it's very good to make all these different drugs. We we make tests on rats, poor rats, and then they're making more simple reaction. They're doing that. They're testing on rats and monkeys, and but inevitably the drug causes more problems. Yeah, therefore, they're always trying to make new drugs. Their activities are in darkness because they don't understand the laws of nature. Therefore, the Vedic culture that gives us everything it also gives us medicine. How you can have medicine which will give you medical effect without the sun. The side effects are there in Ayurvedic medicine also. Maybe it would say this kind of medicine should not be given. This will increase pitta, for instance. So a person with a high pitta condition shouldn't take this. They should take it in combination with another drug, an international drug. So the, the Vedic science gives us that. It's not based on experimentation. It's based on knowledge of how the universe works. Therefore, the pious person should follow the Vedic directions. Whereas an impious person thinks that his, his whole attitude is different. He doesn't want to take higher knowledge. But he thinks that by my own strength, or in the case of demonic scholar, by my own intelligence, I will understand what is it. But the ultimate result is that it's a disaster. But they can't see this because they're demonic. Kamsa can't see that his activities will simply result in distress for himself. And that all his plans will ultimately be undone. He can't see this because he's in the sleeping darkness of Maya. So similarly in modern society, we have so many plans, so many adjustments, we will build new roads, make new drugs, and make more scientific research. But they don't see that it's all doomed to give them distress upon distress upon distress. You can't see this thing. There's some problem, therefore we should try to solve it by our own means. But they don't see that they've been doing this for so many years and simply they're making a net. Of, they're becoming more entangled in a net of illusion. Maya Jala is described in Bhagavad Gita. Demons Maya Jala Samadhita. They are covered by a net of a network of illusion. They cannot understand what's, what's going wrong. They, what's, they say, what's wrong? The children now it's like become a common pastime in America. The children pull out a machine gun and kill so many people. So America's leading the world. Whatever happens in America, don't come everywhere else. It's not come here. Two, you can be sure because everyone follows America. Good or bad, mostly bad. So uh, they're analyzing what to do. We should have some psychological, psychological analysis of the children. Maybe give them more. Sweets or something. Make them nice. But they don't see the whole society. Is, if this is a result of your sense gratification society, everything you do, the whole way society is set up from top to bottom is wrong. President Clinton is, is telling the Hollywood movie, I, you are the ones who are wrong because you make all these movies showing murders. So that may be a factor. But there are so many factors. The children, they come home, there's no mother at home because she's out working. So you come home, there's, there's no love, there's no food, there's no mother to give you food, to welcome you home. Just you take something out of the freezer, stick it in the microwave, watch TV, take some drugs, and you go to school. 
These kids are crazy. They never, they've never had motherly affection, practically, because their mothers are either at work, or when they come home, they go to some party. And children are a nuisance. So, what do you expect? The children, they're, they're shooting away, they're crying inside. The whole time, because they want women to go in the workforce, they should all work and produce more things. The whole society is sick. Right from the car. So what are, you, what are you going to do? The President Clinton is going to, oh, make a few, this is very bad. Do you think that's going to stop? President Clinton, I am very concerned. Do you think someone is pulling out a machine gun, oh, President Clinton is very concerned. I shouldn't do this. <laughs> Yeah, all society is sick. They don't want to address this. The whole society is based on gross sense gratification. They don't know how a human society should be lived. Therefore, they, now they're getting the results more and more and more. That before they thought, well, you know, there are kids shooting others, well, you know, that's the blacks. You know, the black. what do you expect? It's the blacks. You know, they all live in their own area, in Holland and Whites. So, you know, let them shoot each other, we don't care. Black shoot a few blacks, what the hell? But these are, these are white children from middle class backgrounds, whose parents are respectable people. And they are killing like this. Oh. What went wrong? Don't know. Anyway, you have to rush off to a party. No time to think. What is wrong? So it will go on. It's very bad. If they don't have any solution, it will go on. Just like they thought, it's very bad. So many children are taking drugs. Now it's going on. It's just become an accepted part of life in America. It's very bad. Why America? The whole world. It's very bad and we don't like it, but it's really just become part of life. Kids taking drugs, it's a, it's a normal thing. So, from time to time, kids pulling out machine guns and shooting others. It will just become, you know, it's just a normal part of life in America. What can you do? The whole society is demonic. So, you, if, if people behave like demons, what do you expect? They think there's no God in control. And simply thus is the all in all. Kimanyat karma had to come. The society is based on lust. Promote lust, promote greed. And no even basic family values now, not even speaking of the spiritual side, but even materially, they don't know how to do them. So what do you expect? Is your go on? The money exercise. Everyone knows there's something wrong, but they don't want to face up to the fact that we have society has no spiritual dimension because religion is compromised. And the religious leaders also they also want to live a life of sense gratification. They're compromised. Religion is not giving any spiritual message to society. It's it's supporting the same demoniac society. So what can you expect from religion? And, and change is required. Complete change. Change in consciousness. The whole society is sick from top to bottom inside out. They don't want to accept this because they want to go on sense gratification. They may be sick, but I like it. They're eating vomit. They may be vomit, but I like it. It's, it's injecting yourself with drugs. Soft drinks, also carcinogenic. There is the air you breathe is, is poisonous, but they don't care because we're enjoying how foolish. Because we can, we can get some instant kick out of some intoxication or sex or whatever. Enjoy. Without thinking of the consequences. It's just like a child. A child thinks, 
Let me enjoy. We don't care. Never mind the result is a disaster. The Krishna conscious movement is meant to waken people up. What you consider reality is illusory. Real life means spiritual life. And even if you take this material life to be reality, how you are making a hellish situation for yourself by acting impiously, at the very least, people who should preach, at the very least, act piously. Don't slaughter animals, don't take intoxication. You are making simple reactions for yourself. This is how you should understand. The people, yeah, because they want to be demonic, they want to be ignorant, they can't understand the world. It's not consequent by the sun. He could have reformed his life. But for a little time, he's acting very politely with Vedic and Rasuddin. But as soon as his demonic ministers come, let's kill all the babies. Yeah, let's do it. Demonic Despite his intelligence, he cannot understand what is best for him. So it's difficult to wake up. Especially the leaders of society are very demonic. But there are many people who are somewhat thought if you say these things, if you discuss, they can understand. Just uh, say two days ago I was preaching in the in the London in the questions and answers. I was I was saying to all the people gathered there that this whole society is simply cheating you from the time of your birth. The education system is just to make you a pawn in a whole system for the cheating you. They're, they're advertising, buy this, buy that. Who would anyone ever buy Coca-Cola if it was not advertised? Uh, of course, it's only they're selling it on some phantasmagorial idea that by drinking Coca-Cola you'll be happy, which is a blood. It's of no value whatsoever. It's just a junk, a bunch of chemicals. If it's a multi-billion dollar industry, that's exactly that, that's symbolic of the whole society. That they're just giving you junk and making you work hard to buy all the varieties of junk. So they're cheating you. In the education system, the TV, the newspapers, they're all simply cheating you. Leaders should, give, should teach you spiritual love. And everyone agrees, no one disagrees. There are so many people just off the street. They could all understand. But yes, also say that's cheating. It's not very difficult to understand. Oh, one man said, well, but I like to drink alcohol. That is your foolishness. I told you. It's your foolishness. You don't do any good to you. Second poisons, we have to spend hard and long. The people, it's not a very difficult thing to understand. We can say these things. We should say these things. Christian conscious movement is not meant for some sentimental preaching. That, of course, people are looking for something sweet, modern life is bitter, hard. So, Christian conscious is very sweet. But we should also point out how you're being misled. You should point that out. Many people will be willing to listen. We should point out, Prabhupada said our Christian conscience movement is a challenge to the modern history of the civilization. Krishna was a challenge to counsel. No one could challenge counsel. He thought, I am in control. See, Vishnu is hiding in everyone's heart. She was just meditating under a tree somewhere. And Brahma, he's sitting on a lotus at the top of the universe. They're not going to do anything. As far as the other demigods, Indra's just like a fly. So I want to speak of the rest of them. I'm in charge. No one can upset with me. But he did not calculate. Yeah. Krishna. Just like Putana. When she saw Krishna, she saw a little baby. Little baby means harmless. But she could see that he was like a fire covered with ashes. The potency is there. The potency of fire. 
Sometimes the fire is there, but the ashes you can't see. It looks like it's just ashes. Within the ashes there's fire. The fire can again flare up. So Putana saw Krishna like fire covered with ashes. Looking like a little baby. But extremely powerful. So Prabhupada identified that this Krishna conscious human is not different from Krishna. It may seem to be just a few people singing. This woman has got the potency to destroy the demonic of society. It should be, just like Krishna destroyed cancer. What is the best thing to do in this society? To destroy it. It doesn't mean they want to bomb, just like in NATO forces, just bomb and serve you. It's not a solution. Not destroying the madman, but by destroying the demoniac ideas by which people are destroying themselves. The whole society, the whole modern society is run. Not by government. It doesn't matter which government comes. This government, that government, this voting, it's all a farce. Because the world is controlled by multinational corporations. Who, they're not under any government. Big, big corporations, Coca-Cola, IBM, Xerox company, big, big companies, so they control the government. Businessmen, they tell the politicians what to do. But no, just recently, having our Rat Yadra festival in central London, so they didn't, they only wanted to give permission for the parade, and then they didn't want to have permission that at Trafalgar Square we have a bookstore, Questions and answers story. They want to get permission for prasad and free prasad distribution. All these things. No, 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 no. So then our devotees contacted one of our one man. He comes to our temple every day. He's one of the biggest businessmen in England. So he said, "Can we do anything?" Yes. And just tell me what. And so he spoke to the the chief of police, and immediately he had the chief of police had to say, "Okay, okay, okay." To all the conditions. They have to do what, in this case, it was good. But the point is, the so-called demo- leaders of democracy, they have to do what the businessmen say. They get money from them for, for, getting their, for running their political parties and getting their votes. If they don't, if they don't, uh, if, the politi- if the businessmen don't support them, then they'll support the other party. Actually, they support for all the parties. Whoever's in power, they, they are in the pocket of the business. Because they give donations to all the parties. They can't live without them. And the media is controlled. <coughs> Even in the West, they talk about the free press and so on. Just like this. There's one, uh, this Alexander Solzhenitsyn, he came from Russia. He was supposed to be a great hero because he was speaking out against the communist system. He came to America and gave address to Harvard University and said that, but to paraphrase, he said that the Russians, they are slaves. That was the communists. The Americans, they're also slaves. The only difference is the Russians, they know it, the Americans don't know it. So after, before that, he was a great hero. See, he's speaking again after that. <laughs> no longer, no, he no longer popular. No longer the press is promoting him because he's speaking the truth. But they don't like to hear this. The truth is, the truth according to President of Coca Cola Corporation. What is the truth? Coke is the real thing. This is the truth. <laughs> What is the answer of truth? Coca Cola. They want me to say? They don't want people to know what is the truth. They think we're living in a very sophisticated society. But who are the great leaders of society? Football stars. It's all, it's all fantasy. It's all meaningless. Some cinema stars. It's a, what is this? It's a, cinema means you're watching some fantasy. Right? Some drama means fantasy. Modern art. drama should be Mila of the love. That's what drama should be. But instead, they have some 
fantasy, some made up song. So they're just keeping people in a big illusion world. See, I, I see the advertisements here for Pepsi, they have some British football stuff. But what does it matter? It doesn't, what does it matter whether someone kicks the ball here in Croatia or whether they kick it in England? But it's considered a lot. Very important. These people there, they earn millions and millions of dollars or pounds or kuna or whatever you want to call Not kuna. Uh, they're earning so much money, something which has nothing of, it's no significance, no importance whatsoever. But in modern society, the sport has become something very important because it, nidra rupe in it keeps everyone in illusion. Big, big illusion. So you be happy by watching the sport, you see. You can go home and watch TV and, and there's the tennis championships and then after that there's the football championships and after that there's I don't know so many more, so many golf championships. And it just creates a big syndrome. But it's all in the meantime, society is going up. People are not the demoniac emotions. Don't think. Or if you want to think, you should think in the way we want you to think. Just like all the academics at universities, they're giving theories and this and that. But they can only give theories that are within the systems. However, if you say something outside, then your academic theories, your academic career is finished. <coughs> that is uh, Druta Karma and Prabhu especially has been promoting this hidden history of the human race and showing that these archaeologists, you know all this how the archaeologists they discover by bona fide scientific means that civilized, organized, intelligent human life on earth has been going on for millions of years. So what is the result of this? They get a Nobel Prize? No, they lose their job. Because it goes against the theory. The, the theory that civilized man is just something new. It just came up. You know, civilization began in, in Britain. I went to America and now we're civilized. The kids are shooting each other. They don't want to recognize that, that ancient civilizations and so much knowledge and so much advancement. They just want to think everything evolved recently and the, uh, the perfection of evolution is to be white, American, uh, Anglo-Saxon background, Protestant, to have a suit and tie and a good job, decent job. And your children take drugs and shoot each other. Well, that's just an unfortunate side of family. Otherwise, this is the perfection of civilized, of evolution. We finally, we, 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 we first of all, we were just chemicals, then we became cells, then we became monkeys, and then we became savages, and now we are civilized Americans. The ultimate point of chemical interaction. Perfection of evolution. So uh, they don't want to. They don't want to accept. <coughs> but actually, there's an undercurrent in Western intellectual society. There are many, many people who who know that it's all bogus. That they teach us on the internet. There are all kinds of things like intelligent people who. Uh, and very intelligently, they're discussing all kinds of things like you know, a lot of it's back on, but things like UFOs, and, uh, knowledge from ancient civilizations, so many Bermuda Triangle, unexplained phenomena. There are a lot of people out there, intelligent people, who know that the establishment is covering up all kinds of information. They know. Everybody knows that the American Air Force knows there are UFOs. And everybody knows that we all know that you know. But still, officially, it's just every UFO that ever existed was a reflection of an airplane or so many things. 
the dinosaurs still culpable and they are how dinosaurs can say they're extinct and they're not extinct. And now they're finally dinosaur. Dinosaur, dinosaur. Dinosaur, yes. Dinosaur, dinosaur. So that now they're discovered. There are photos on the internet of dinosaurs. Photographs. Cameras evolved later than the extinction date of dinosaurs. But they had the, of course, establishment science doesn't recognize it. There's a, lot, there's a lot of interest in this. That's why, actually, there's true. You know, sometimes we hear our movement is doing so badly in America, there's a lot of interest. Among, especially among young people. Just recently, at this, they had a re- another Woodstock just a few days ago. So the report, did you see that in the compound? The devotees came from all over America with bands full of books. Before the end of the festival, they finished the book. The first day, one devotee did more than 300 big books. The young people in America, I mean, that means like, who goes to rock concerts that meets from a more intelligent or intellectual class? They want these books. They think there's something valuable here. People know. Our movement, people say they don't. Have you heard many people say we don't like organized religion? Do they say that here? We don't like organized religion? Well, that's our problem, but we're not. They think we're organized religion, but our main problem is we're so disorganized. <laughs> <laughs> otherwise, uh, otherwise, it's a, there's tremendous potential for preaching, making devotees, distributing books, tremendous potential. In the Western world, people may know that the whole similar. I mean, they may not know, but just under their skin, they sense it, that the whole society stinks. It's rotten. It's completely rotten. That we need spiritual alternative. And they know, people know that Krishna consciousness, there's something substantial that if we could get our act together, we could kick out this constant society. Of course, organization, we don't want this kind of corporate management and all this kind of thing. But at least, devotees, we should see what is the need of the hour that the whole society is sick and people. So many people, they want Krishna consciousness. <coughs> it's the de- duty of devotees to come together, put aside whatever petty differences we have, to work together, to spread this movement, make people, devotees, get them chanted, reading the books, bring them to Krishna consciousness, and keep on this push. Don't think, well, now we preach for so many years, now we should all become Babajans. We have to keep on pushing this woman. There's tremendous potential. Krishna is more powerful than Kamsa. This woman is destined to change human society. We have to keep that as our focus. And this woman will do its job of pushing back the demonic society. Hare Krishna. Any question? Shri Prabhupada said before 25 years, in the years, in the future, all these skyscrapers of modern society will crash down. So that will do that if we crash or if we crash by the question is that Prabhupada had said that within 25 years ago, Prabhupada said that within 50 years the skyscrapers of modern civilization will crash down. Is it physically or how is it? Uh, I never heard this quote before. I thought it came in back to Godhead magazine many years ago when Prabhupada speaks out when Prabhupada was present. That within 50 years, the cheating of these scientists and bogus religionists will be finished. And Prabhupada also said that this petrol-based civilization will not last very long. 
the petrol based civilization, oil based, oil based. So that's how I heard it. I didn't hear he said the skyscrapers will come crashing down. Um, someone was just telling me in London that, that the economic situation in the world is similar to that before the great crashes between the First and Second World War. That, that, that it's, it's set up for economic collapse because there's so much artificial money. There are many internet companies now that uh, people make billions of dollars just in a few days. But it's all based on some illusory, some artificial transfer of paper money, which isn't actually there. The whole economic system is set up on artificial inflation. That the, the governments print so many banknotes, but they don't have gold to back it up. And the, the, the banks give huge loans, but they don't have money. And if people, if, if everyone went to the banks and asked for their money out, they wouldn't be able to give it because they, they're giving loans, but they don't have money in the way to back it up. So they're just hoping that everyone doesn't run to the bank and take their money off there because they can't give it. That's what happened in Russia. One day they said, don't come to the bank because if you do, we're not going to give you any money because we don't have it. People just lost all their money and went to the bank. So that... Economic business is a very, very uh, shaky position. Of course, it has been at the same time, but any time it can collapse the whole economic system. It's an extremely artificial society in which you bring raw materials from one country to another by ship. You, you assemble them in one country and then you send them out to another country. Or you bring food from one country to another country, you see, food. The biggest import, importer of Spanish olive oil is Italy. In Italy, they sell there so many olives. They import so much from Spain. So like that, it's, it's artificial. The natural thing is you food, which is grown locally, you eat it. That's all. It's absolutely it. Britain, they produce, Britain, they produce less than 50% of their own food. They import maybe 70 or more percent of their food. I think I told this last time, last time I was in London, the restaurant manager was telling me he was taking a stock check in the, of, of the kitchen to see which vegetables need to be bought. And he saw all the box of the vegetables. That is, they had so many varieties of vegetables. Not a single one had been grown, grown in Britain. It was all in front of So it's an artificial society. They either have completely artificial cities like Dubai. The whole city is just built next to the sea in the desert. And it's all, it's all built up on... Uh, there, are some, there is some oil not in Dubai itself, in other parts of the United Arab Emirates. But it's a very rich city, it's built up on uh, import and export, trading. But it doesn't produce anything. There's nothing made there. They don't grow any food. All the food is imported. Everything is imported. It's a very rich city. It's absolutely artificial. How long can it go on? They're so much worried about this collapse. When there's a collapse, people in Bangladesh, they might hear about an economic collapse. Well, they? <laughs> because they're living on the land, growing their own food. They're considered poverty stricken. They have food, clothing, shelter, all of these things. They don't have cars, highways, all these things. They're considered poor. But when the crash comes, how much Americans will be affected. They can't imagine living in a telephone. Electricity. And the whole society is based on all these things. So many different factors. You have to have electricity, TV, phone, freezer, microwave oven. They, they require so many artificial things. They have to bring, in big, big cities, they have to bring food from outside. What will we do in the city? There's no petrol. 
Or they do for food. Or even if they bring wheat, yeah. how are you grinding? Yeah. Maybe if you grind it, you don't know how to cook it. They don't know how to make bread. Bread? What is bread? It's something you find in the shop. Like everything else. You don't know how to make it. I wonder how many people here know how to make bread. No bread practice. <laughs> Most people in this country still know how to make bread. In Western Europe, it's. I think maybe in France. No, they also buy in cafes. In Britain, it's it's unusual. Even when I was a kid, I used to make bread when I was a kid because I thought the stuff in the body stinks. I used to make my own bread as well. Why are you wasting time? You can do it. Buy it in a shop. And so they think, why cook? You can buy food from a shop. That's all. You just buy some fast food. Go to McDonald's. The whole of America. Drive into McDonald's. You know, your engine's still running. You take, you, you buy something to eat, you pay them, and then, and then you drive off, eating as you drive. Don't waste any time. As it is, as it is, as it is. I'm going to finish there because I have to go to the Serbian see if I can get it, see if they'll give me a visa. Is it there? Charming country. <laughs> <laughs> to see what has been, see uh, what is the result of President Clinton and Tony Blair's kindness to them. <laughs> A very uh, kindly bombed them to pieces. I was getting emails from Serbia that uh, bombs are dropping all around us. Please persuade that I can serve. Go on serving Krishna, either in this body or another body. <laughs> oh, yes. Yeah, last night I was saying that I had some Mahaprasad from Radha Lamanishwa, yesterday's Mangalati. Unfortunately, Lufthansa, a highly efficient German airlines, lost my bag. But they very efficiently found it now. We brought it at 11.30 last night. So, you can give some Maha Prasad from the exquisitely beautiful, merciful Radha Nandanishwar. The only good thing in London is Radha Nandanishwar. <laughs> I also have some books here. I'm always trying to sell my books. Like I said, if you ever get money, print books. So I'm printing my own books.